Freezing my bones, ah, or your Ghanaian boxer, or cover a few days ago after say a video be by an or boony opponent, Basavasano, about how during an interview with Kafu Day of GTV and the same revelations about him about out now, or Kasai the far growing up in Ghana and how life was and how he has now become uh, globally known as well as what he does in the UK to survive in San Dudonana. Just a freezing my bones, and they throw out. Mummy and good, you know, near kind of seven bars. So, and now we for I've been chair for comment box. How did you get into boxing? How did you become a boxer? Oh, um, <laughs> that, that, that was a very interesting story because I started boxing very late at the age of 27, you know, and that was um 2017. And um, a lot of criticize came up. Um, you can't do it, you are too old, uh, look at these kids, you know, um, they are nine, seven, eight, that is how you start boxing. You know, at this age, you got to start into your hustler and keep doing what you're doing and leave the boxing alone, you know, but I never let them make the um, uh, yeah, kind of comment and criticize, let me down, and I keep going, I had my amateur fight, 20, uh, 20 second knockout. In my first uh, amateur fight then during my amateur time i got some sparring session i knocked someone out and 50 cent post the video mayweather post the video and it, it went viral all around the world and i got um some interview from um the sky and the sun and that is where british matasi came up what were you doing before boxing i mean when did you get to the to the to the UK to start your life there. What were you doing before? I, I was a cleaner. I was I was going to um, office from office uh, from one another office to another office, and I was also a kitchen porter, washing dishes in a restaurant and stuff like that. A true kitchen porter, I become a chef, and I'm still a chef. Um, uh, you, we are interested in your story from Ghana. I mean, where did everything begin for you in Ghana? Sorry, say it again. So how did your story begin in Ghana? Where did you grow up? What did you do? Where did you go to school? What were you doing in Ghana before you got to the UK? Oh, thank you. Um, I, I grew up in a small village in Asante region in Sector East. Um, that is a, a Sokori and that village called Bima, that is where I grew up. And uh, I got 10 sisters, I'm only one boy of them. And um, I went to school in the same community in Asukore, um, the TI of Mamadia. And I went to Krovia uh, Asati Technical Vocational Institute, so that is uh, Kagi. And uh, I did a BC, which is building and construction there. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a kind of a guy, I, I work hard, so. I take my BC to next level. I, I, I travel to um, to big city, which is Kumasi. So my sis, some of my sisters was living in the uh, Bremen. So sometime in the vacation time, I go there and uh, I, I just chasing for masons to looking for job, like plastering, concrete, you know, and this type of hard working job. And yeah, that kind of sort of the job I was doing. So you were a mason. Sorry, you were a mason. You do you did a lot of physical manual labor, correct? Um, I can't hear you. Well, sorry, you sir. said you worked as a mason on construction sites. Is that correct? Yeah, that's that's perfect. Yeah, uh, mason and construction. Uh, it was fun. It was funny story because I bought a shovel. You know, the one to mix a concrete, and uh, I I used to sit uh, um, the um Nana KJC um. Uh, cement shop so when the uh, masons or when people are coming to buy uh, cement i just ask them do you have someone who's going to mix your concrete for you <laughs> wow <laughs> they said, they said, not really i said all right i can do the job at that time i was skinny you know and they said i can do the job and when when they gave me opportunity i don't play around um i showed them that i can do the job and the next time they called me coming we have you another uh we have another job do you want to come i said yeah i'll come so i always very active and aside that i went to uh Asante Achimagogo and i was doing a uh loading boy i was we went to uh uh timber 
uh, in the forest and cutting some ticks, you know, take uh, take wood and ship, shipping them to India, European, uh, um, European countries to make a furniture. So I was uh, one of the uh, boys. We carried them and load them in the truck. Wow, it's a very inspirational story. I mean, Mason, a loading boy, working in the forest, cutting timber. What was pushing you? What was inspiring you to do what you had to do to get to where you are today? Who was your inspiration? Uh, um, thanks for the, uh, this question. I would say it's my family because I know where I come from. I know where I grew up and I know um, my parents, my mom, my, uh, my dad. Um, uh, rest in peace to my dad. He passed away two years ago. You know, um, and um, I know my sisters. And I mean, it was a tough time because I quite remember in the in school time um, when I was a young, um, my parents don't have money for us to uh, for, like, breakfast or for lunch or anything. So what they they, they do uh, they does is that they go to farm early morning and they they prepare and uh, they get us a lot of cassava, plantain, avocado, mangoes in a basket. And they gave it to us to go and sell them in the markets before mm. we go to school. Or sometimes we give them to my mom's friends to sell them. And after school, uh, after break, lunchtime, we come to ask her, Auntie, have you sell any plantain or cassava? We want some money to eat. And she said, No, nobody asks anything. So I can't give them money. I can't give you money. And we went back to school. And later, sometimes we can eat after, uh, we can't eat until 3 p.m. Wow. You know, me and my one of my sister, sister, sister Ruth. You know, so we've been hustling. I've been lot. I've been going a lot. Even coming to this country, I've been sleeping rough uh, in in London, sleeping in the bars because I don't have any family here. Life was tough, but I never give up. So I see myself like a winner. I don't lose in life. You know what I've been through? It make me strong. It make me who I am right now. So um, I don't let myself down, and also. Um, there is a lot of things which is pushing me, make me strong who I am right now and, uh, and make me do the, uh, what I'm doing right now. But such... the, the strong thing it pushes me is my family. I look up to them, you know, um, I, I'm not, uh, I mean, <laughs> the place I grew up, Bima, there was no light when I was there. Now, now I see some pictures there, there's a uh, uh, light there. When, when I was there, there was no light I grew up in. Um, Candle uh, light, you know. I don't know how they call it. Yeah, and candle. We went to yeah. some uh, uh, farm to get some water, you know, like, like um, wherever we get water, there was no pipe. So, um, as a, a young man like that, grow up in a kind of environment or um, community like and get opportunity to come here. I was like, why not? I can do this, you know, and I gave myself time. And I, I, I put all myself into this sport and I sacrificed for it. And now I'm here. Oh, we've got a wonderful story. I'm just curious though, when did you uh, go from Seth Jima to Freezy McBones? I mean, what is the history behind your name? It's such a unique name. Freezy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Freezy McBones. Uh, you know, you just, uh, in those times, sweet time, when you complete your J uh, junior high school, um, they make a t-shirt and they put your name and your nickname in the yeah. back. So some of my, uh, uh, my friends called like, um, on my name, Ampon, aka 50 Cent, jo um, um, Steven Entry, aka Lo uh, Lodge Bank, like some kind of funny, Nick crazy yeah. nickname and stuff like that so that is where i got my and, but i remember my teacher asked me what's the name of uh, what's the meaning of crazy crazy and i said i don't know i said just put it and that's my nickname because that that time as a um i i, I grew up in village and these guys are in the city boys you know so i don't have a nickname so i just my for one of my friends helped me to get that but i don't know how it happened and i gave uh, my uh, Crazy to them, and my cousin said, "You, you got strong bones. You got very strong bones because everything you do, you just like go for it. Like we did, 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 do That's why the bones come up, and then it added like big back bones. But right now, it turned into 
uh, when I do interview, people ask me, why are you call freezing my bone? I said, because I freeze people in the ring. And <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's it. You freeze them in the ring. Ain't easy being freezy. I hear that's one of the, the mantras, right? Ain't easy being freezy. Hello? You freeze people in the ring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, um, I, I tell them I freeze, I freeze people in the ring because I knock people out. That is why I... <laughs> and talking of the knockout, just how, uh, the, the last fight we saw you, what was going through your mind when you were knocking the freeze out of that guy in the ring? I mean, we saw you as somebody who was just angry and hungry. What was going through your mind when you were punching that guy? Honestly, it was emotional. I, I never felt in that before. I never felt that it before in my life. Because look at a little bit of my life, I've been explained to you just a few uh, uh, short of time, right? A few minutes ago. Uh, so when I get opportunity, I enter the arena and I saw a lot of cameras, a lot of um, TV stations, a lot of people there. I was emotional. I, I, I think um, I was crying a lot, like almost five minutes, non-stop. And my coach uh, could, uh, couldn't control me, couldn't help me. And anytime he asked me, what's wrong with you? Before the, this happened, before the fight, you know, he asked me, what's wrong with you? Um, anytime I try to um, explain myself and it's getting worse, you know, so I, I said to him, um, nothing, I'm all right. So before before the fight, I, I I was already emotional. So when I get there, I was like, this guy is better to be, be right. I, I'm going to beat him like a thief. So when I get <laughs> two gloves on, I get in and he's one of the tough kids. He had 113 fight. No matter what, he would never go down. You know, so I was like, okay, cool, we will see. Then uh, I got the results, but I could not get the knockout. Uh, and uh, he came up to me and he said, you are one of the hardest punch I ever fought upon all my 113 fight. And I was like, all right, that's cool. That's calm. But uh, at the end of the day, yeah, I invited him to come to my... Um, my changing room and i've got contagious business going on as well it's crazy food so we shared it snacks and we, we, we yeah after you froze the guy you gave him plantain chips sorry freezy so after you beat the guy you gave him plantain chips is that what you did <laughs> yeah 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 i invite him to come uh, come to my dressing room and we share some snacks <laughs> and but that's not come from my 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 uh, it's my product Yes, yes. yes, more business. I, I guess I guess that I'm going on now. Oh, I see you dressed as a so you're a chef as well. You, 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 this is your business, right? The snacks business is your business. Is that correct? Sorry, I see a picture of you wearing a chef's uniform and, and holding your snacks. So, is that your business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a chef as well. Like I said, I was a, a, a kitchen porter. All right. Um, um, and through kitchen porter, I become a, a sous chef. Yeah. You know, and um, I have my small business going on, uh, freezy plantation chips, um, freezy food. That's the plan. And but right now, um, I moved up to freezy jollof rice. It's already cooked. All you got to do is just warming up in microwave, and it's done. You know, and that one is coming out soon, like next uh, two weeks coming. So we we look uh, we're looking forward for the marketing process. Where are you going to take the boxing on? Because you are a chef by day and, what, and a boxer by night. Uh, are you going to continue boxing? Or this is it? Um, no, no. I went it. I want it all. <laughs> because of where I'm coming from, I'm hungry. I want it all. I, 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 I always want to have the time to make sure I will do all of it. First, boxing is so important. It needs time. I train three times a day. First, my session is yoga, hot yoga. After that, I do boxing part session with my coach. And then I go back home and I take a rest and I go back to gym and I do strength and condition again. So it's not a joke. Boxing is serious. It needs my time. But I try to find the right people around me to make sure all is done. So sometimes I go to kitchen and I check everything is all right to make sure the process and everything is going all right. Awesome. Freezy. So, my friends who don't know much about boxing, but they think they, they know much about boxing, they are worried for you because they said in the fight, you didn't seem to 
protect yourself. I mean, it's like you just went after this guy and they are afraid that maybe somebody will catch you with a hook and then you are down. Um, explain your style. It reminds me a bit of Mike Tyson in his early days. You don't really care about defense, do you? It's all attack, attack, attack. Freezy? I don't want you to repeat yourself again, uh, but I will try to see if I can answer your question. Yeah. Um, I did not hear you well. Anyway, um, I love Mike Tyson. I look up to him. He's the kind of guy he been motivated me a lot because since I've become a boxer, I make up in my mind if if it's not pickable, which is Mike Tyson style, I don't want to do this force. You know, so every day by day I watch Mike and I, I like the way he moves and stuff like that. Um I see a lot of comments coming out after my uh, fight. Oh, he needs to protect his uh, his hands. He needs to do this. He needs to do that. every fight. You're gonna get criticized. You're gonna get comments. You're gonna get feedback. It's all good. But for this fight, you see, I was really determined to knock the guy out. And this is the guy. He start is not going there boxing like Mayweather. Put your hand up and that. You need to go straight to him aggressive. Don't give him time to rest. Looking for a way to punch him and like do whatever it will take you to win the fight. But um, my next fight is going to change. A lot of things are going to come. A lot of things are going to come. It's a learning process, you know. Every time, every opportunity, every step, you learn something new. Yeah, and you've been in this game for only six years, so you are still learning. When is the next fight, Freezy? Who are you going to freeze next time? Uh when is the next fight? Yes. Um, I think today is the three days after my fight. So um, at the end of this week, I'm going to have a meeting with my management and we see when is the next day, and where, who, and whoever will come. I'm ready. Um, I'm ready because this is my life now. I mean, I'm ready. What has surprised you about boxing? Come again. What has been the biggest surprise for you about boxing as a professional box uh, as a boxer? What's the biggest surprise for you? That was Anthony Joshua. Oh man, that was a great surprise. There was a one time I was sleeping. I don't know where he get my number. He called me and I pick up. Uh, he called me in the, um, FaceTime. I pick up the call and say, "Who is that?" I said, "Oh my God!" It was so soft. I was shocked. It was Anthony Joshua and. Um, La, um, this year, in the new year, he called me. He, he, he always check on me. Even in my last fight, he texted me. He said, congratulations. I'm so proud of you. And you work so hard. You deserve everything. But what he did to me, it shocked me, was um, the end of this year, I think uh, the first date of the, of the year, he, said, um, he, uh, he called me, asked me about my parents, my mom, my everything. everything. I said, everyone is good. He said, all right. Um, um, how did you spend your Christmas? I said, it, it went well, it's all right. But the thing about me is that I live alone. So every Christmas, my family is not here. So I just spend alone and that. And he talked about me in that. He said, send me your bank account. I said, what? He said, yeah, don't, don't, uh, I said, Champ, don't do that. The, the next day, I did not send him my bank account. He called me and check on me. Make sure you do. I said, all right, cool. Send me my account and guess what? He sent me 5K for just a gift. I said, wow. Oh. <laughs> and look at Anthony Joshua, the position he is, a man like that, looking after you all the time in terms of finance, financial, like he cared about, me. he cared about, not only me. So I was thinking, he, he just did this to me. Imagine how many people he'd be helping them out. The guy, he got good soul. He got good vibe. He's a, he's a, he's a good guy. Are you surprised how people are so motivated and inspired by your story? Because it's all over in Ghana, and I'm sure it's all around the world as well. Um, your story is a great one. Sorry? Your story is a very inspirational one. Does it surprise you? Kind of. Kind of, but somehow not. Because um, I remember my dad always said to me... Um, Hard work don't kill you. It makes you strong and it brings success to you, you know. And I've learned that um, if you want to be a successful, you need to work hard, you know. So it's not surprised me. If I, if I, if I sleep in the bed and I wake up and I'm fighting uh, Queensbury promotion, one of the best promotion in the world, or if I wake up and I sleep 
oh sorry if i sleep and i wake up and you interview me that that would be surprised right but i put in the work yeah i run i used to run two o'clock three o'clock you know i used to do a nice shift and i run in the day do day it was crazy my life was crazy it's like something's pushing me through my hardware you know so i think i deserve it yeah for every movement everything is going on in my life i deserve it and it's not surprising at all and i believe that this is just the beginning because this is my second fight so there's a lot of pain coming a lot of process are coming all right you're a tough guy i mean mean guy you freeze the people in the ring but when was the last time you cried man do you do you have the soft side of you yeah i cried i'm not gonna lie to you sometimes i cross my door and i cry i do i'm very so I, i'm very i've got a very very soft heart i'm very kind person i help a lot of people but that one is a side uh, life anyway let's talk about myself you know i i care about people during the COVID time i was giving back to the community train people for free i don't charge them because I want them to be active. But people were so bored at home. You know what I'm saying? I do, I do my best to help everyone I can in my life. You know what I'm saying? But, but I cry a lot. I cry a lot. What's your message now? Sorry? What's your message now for young people who are going through tough times? Not even young people. Just people who are going through tough times. And it looks like Hello? there's no hope for them. What is your message for people this morning? Hello. Freezy, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, we want to wrap this up shortly. I just wanted to know, what word do you have to give to somebody who is watching right now and needs a little bit of encouragement and inspiration? What can you tell them? Oh, you mean the youth? Yes, the youth. Um, what I will say is that uh, when you grow up or where you was born or your background or your environment it doesn't it doesn't judge your life it doesn't tell you who you're gonna be right look at me a guy who grew up with a place that was low light and now i'm here get interviewed with one of the uh, national tv in ghana right and i'm doing I'm, it's crazy i don't know i, I was the kids need to wake up the kids need to wake up life is you it's all about you if you want to be a better person, it's what about you? Your mom is not going to do it for you. When I was a kid, I thought my dad was rich. I thought my dad is going to stay, at the life I'm living is going to stay like that forever. And my mom is going to give me what she can. My dad is going to give me what she can. But now, my dad is no more. Now, I'm a man. I'm doing everything by myself. I don't depend on anyone. My dad is not there. I've got 10 sisters, right? I've got niece and cousin a lot. We are lot. Now I'm the man in the house. I'm the one I'm looking after the family and everyone. Right? If I if I did not make this decision, now my dad is not there. Who's gonna look after the family? Everyone look after me. I look after my uh, uh, my cousin in the university and here and there. It's all because of the right decision I make. So don't let yourself down. Make sure you do your best. Everything you do, make sure you do your best at hundred percent. But the most important thing is that the people around you, the people around you, is so important. If they are into drugs, if they are smoking, drinking, that means it tells you you are in the wrong position. Stay away from the people like that and stay focused. Right? Keep praying. Keep praying. God, listen to us, and there is a God. There is a way for you, and it's possible. Freezy McBones ain't easy being freezy. Please go ahead and freeze all the opponents in front of you and all the barriers. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. And the screen froze. <laughs> freezy, thanks a lot. Thank you. It's a real pleasure. God bless. One love. Vimbaz TV.